Okay, so when we think about participants, obviously we have to think about the ethics involved in collecting qualitative data and protecting uh, the participants. And that's why we have the ethics review process at the university, so that that's really um, all in place, because we really can't collect any data until it's been through ethics. Um, anything else you want to add about the ethics? Well, I think... Um um, qualitative studies are, are sometimes specially sensitive for mm. participants. We've got a small number of participants and they've yeah. quite often been selected because they've had a particular experience or there's something special about them that makes them interesting yeah. to us. And it's quite an intensive way of collecting data. Mm. Um, you know, it's not, they don't just have to fill in a questionnaire or do some tests on the computer. They've got to open themselves a little bit yeah. and reveal something and make a bit of an effort to express and describe something mm. about themselves so mm -hmm. they make themselves a little bit vulnerable and that's why we have to handle the whole process mm -hmm. with care mm -hmm. um, do things in an ethical way you know thinking about um, uh, how we handle issues like confidentiality for example mm -hmm. and uh, protecting the data that we've taken away from the interview I've found it quite fun with some of my participants to ask them if they'd like to choose a pseudonym for themselves and they actually enjoy that process um, and some of my participants have, have picked some really hilarious names <laughs> which is quite funny but, um, but they've, it's been a playful way to start an interview. Uh, I mean, you have to judge it as to wh whether that's a good fit with your participants. But the women that I interviewed for one project who lived in larger bodies and we were talking about um, how that was for them, they really enjoyed that process, some of them, and it gave them a, a sense of um, early engagement with me as the interviewer. And it lightened it up a little bit and they, um, it, it worked really, really well. Some people are just like, oh, I don't mind, just give me a code or a, or a name, that's fine. But other people, it's, it's, it's quite a nice warm-up in a way. Yeah, well, it does sound like a good way to uh, remind participants in a way about some of the, you know, the, the exercise that they're involved in. It's yeah. a research project, and yeah. that is what the data is for. Yeah. Uh, it won't be used for anything else, yeah. and so on. Yeah. yeah, but it's not just their names that we have to protect. Any other identifying features, of course, like if they're mentioning a town or an organization or other people, then we have to make sure that's not identifiable as well. And I think that's important for them to know too, because some people really, um, you know, they need assurance around that, depending on what the research question is. Of course, it comes back to this research question again, doesn't it? And of course, the participants have to fit with the research question. It's no good interviewing people that haven't had the experience that you need them to have. That's maybe a bit too obvious, but um, sometimes the richness of the data is down to it being a really good choice of participant. Well, that's right. And in a qualitative study, the participants are all a bit special in some mm. way, aren't they? Mm. It's a, something about them mm. that makes them a homogenous group, usually. They've got yeah. something in common, which is why they've been purposively sampled, yeah. as, as they say in the jargon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they're there for a reason. You yeah. pick them because yeah. they've had the experience or they're in the situation that mm. you're investigating. Mm -hmm. So in a way, our, it's our participants that define what the project is about, mm -hmm. and they reflect the research question. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes I think it helps, um, not in all cases, and this is, you know, perhaps students can talk to their supervisors about this, um, but the, the participants might like to see some of the questions beforehand, and that can help them ask questions about them to make sure they feel comfortable in it. Uh, with, with the research or with the questions that they're going to, and also step out of some questions if they don't feel comfortable with that. That's that might right. be appropriate in some cases. Now, with interviews, we're taking participants one by one, aren't mm -hmm. we? And we interview mm -hmm. them individually. Yeah. But there, there are situations where we put our participants together in a group, yeah, in, like in a focus, focus group. group. Yeah. Should we talk about focus groups? Yes, let's, uh, let's think about how yeah. a focus group is different. Because it is different. Okay. 